This is Barbara Melhart. I'm from the Department of Molecular Pharmacology of the University of Groningen. Today's date is March 30th, 2020, and this is a recorded class for the course Pathology and Immunology for First Year Pharmacy Students. I originally gave this class on March 6th, um, but I re-recorded it for a complete set of online lectures. And this was the um, first um, class of uh, Immunology 2, in which the basics of the uh, innate and adaptive immune system were explained. Um, and this first class is about first-line defenses of our immune system. So in the first couple of classes, we uh, talked about immunity and um, I explained that there are two different types of uh, immune responses, innate immune responses and adaptive immune responses. The innate immune responses uh, are fast and need to be fast because they're first line of defense. Um, and when they cannot handle things anymore, then the adaptive immune system is um, involved as well. Innate immunity uh, consists of epithelial barriers, uh, phagocytes, the complement system and, and K cells, while adaptive immunity consists of lymphocytes that um, either make antibodies or um, start up cellular responses. So on this class on uh, March 6th, um, we were already talking about uh, SARS-CoV-2 and uh, COVID-19. And that was the day when the uh, first death was reported in the Netherlands. We now know uh, that things are progressing fast and there are a lot more people dying from COVID-19. But to get back to um, characteristics of innate and adaptive immune responses, um, here is side-by-side -side comparison. Innate immune responses are fast. Uh, they take seconds to hours, while adaptive immune responses are slower. They take days or weeks to develop. The innate immune responses are not specific, um, while the adaptive immune responses responses are very specific. They can, lymphocytes can recognize very specific antigens uh, while innate immune cells only recognize patterns. Um, therefore, they only have limited recognition while the adaptive immune system lymphocytes recognize millions and millions of uh, antigens. Um, also, uh, innate immune responses have limited memory. Um, it, it was thought that they did not have any memory, but uh, latest research has shown that there's limited memory. While adaptive immune responses uh, are built upon memory. So uh, once you've seen a bug before, your memory response helps you to respond better the next time. Innate immune responses have limited recognition of self. They, they can sort of distinguish between self and non-self, but not very well. While the adaptive immune system is built upon being able to distinguish self from non-self. Uh, innate immune responses are um, not flexible. They're there or they're not there. Uh, while adaptive immune responses can adapt, so they can expand when needed and contract when not needed anymore. Innate immune responses are present at birth, uh, while adaptive immune responses really need to develop after birth. So back to innate immune responses. What um, consist? What do uh, they consist of? Well, to prevent yourself from uh, pathogen exposure, for instance, we have barriers. Um, that could be uh, physical barriers, like uh, the tight, tightly packed epithelial cells at the skin and the mucosa, um, but also mucus and other secretions that catch uh, microorganisms or kill microorganisms. Then there's mechanical uh, barriers that's, uh, for instance, flushing of the mucus by, uh, by cilia or by fluid flow. And there's uh, chemical barriers. Those are enzymes and antibodies that are present in, in the secretions or mucus um, 
that is present on the mucosa. But also the pH in the stomach, for instance, is a, is a barrier and kills microorganisms. Well, if these barriers fail, then we have um, tissue-resonant immune cells that can help out with trying to uh, limit uh, the danger of, uh, of the um, infection. So that could be uh, uh, tissue resident cells like macrophages, um, mast cells, basophils, um, natural killer cells, uh, certain types of innate lymphoid cells, um, all these cells that are present in tissue. And if they cannot handle it anymore, they can call in the help of, uh, of cells from the bone marrow like neutrophils and eosinophils. Uh, and monocytes. Um, furthermore, there are chemicals that can help, uh, like complement in blood or uh, type 1 interference uh, produced in the tissues. Well, when, uh, when that's not enough, then help of the uh, adaptive immune system is needed and then you get either antibody-mediated responses by B cells or cell-mediated responses by uh, T lymphocytes. So here again a little bit more about that first line of defense. Uh, epithelium that is present on all those parts of the body that are exposed to the outside world, so the skin, the gut, the lungs, um, the um, vagina, and um, all these um, tissues also make uh, secretions um, that are uh, filled with antibodies and enzymes that can uh, trap and disable pathogens. The stomach has uh, a low pH that helps to, to destroy swallowed pathogens. And of course there's a mechanical removal, so uh, the mucociliary uh, escalator that removes mucus from uh, mucosa, tears, coughing and sneezing, and the motility of the GI tract, those all help to remove pathogens before they can enter the body. Um, if the, the body is breached and pathogens come into the blood directly, then we have the complement system that can help us with fighting uh, those um, pathogens. And the complement system is very much like uh, the coagulation cascade. So that means that one um, protein gets activated and then activates another protein and then activates another protein. There's a whole cascade happening that leads to uh, um, the killing of bacteria. And it's explained a little bit better here. It's a family of plasma proteins that help out immune cells in their fight against microbes. So it works through an amplification cascade, one protein activating the other protein, etc. And the complement system has three main functions. So it stimulates opsonization. And opsonization is a difficult word for preparing for phagocytosis. So it's, it's coating bacteria or other things with uh, proteins that um, can be recognized by phagocytes like macrophages and neutrophils uh, so that these are then eaten by these cells. Um, it also generates chemotactic factors to uh, tell the uh, neutrophils and macrophages and the monocytes where they should go for phagocytosis, but it can also directly kill target cells, so it can directly kill microorganisms. So how does this work? There are several ways for the complement pathway to become activated. And I'll first explain how it becomes activated, uh, what happens when it's activated, and then I'll explain how it can be activated. So what happens is that a protein called C3 gets activated and changes, um, and then activates other proteins uh, leading to activation of C5, C6, C7, until you get to um, 
a, um, a complex. So the fragments of all these proteins form a complex called the membrane attack complex. And this membrane attack complex can attack the membrane of a microorganism. And this membrane attack complex looks like a pore. So it inserts itself into uh, the cell wall or cell membrane of a microorganism and then the content of the cell will leak out of this pore and the microbe will be lysed and will be dead. Um, and part of these uh, protein fragments that uh, develop um, can either be used as uh, chemokines or as opsonization uh, fragments. So for instance C3B can coat microorganisms and C3B is recognized by neutrophils and macrophages um, and then induces a process of phagocytosis. Uh, C3A for instance is a, a chemotactic factor. So how do you get this C3 activated? Well there are three pathways to activate the complement pathway. The um, classical pathway is the pathway uh, in which um, a, a microorganism that has been recognized by antibodies activates the, um, um, the pathway. And then there's the alternative pathway in which the microbe itself directly activates the complement system. And the lectin pathway is uh, another pathway in which um, the blood contains uh, mannose binding lectins and uh, microorganisms that express mannose-related uh, mannose proteins uh, can be recognized by this mannose-binding lectin and that then activates the complement system. Well, epithelial barriers, um, basically putting up a wall so things cannot come in. So it's a physical barrier to infection. That means that these epithelial cells are tightly packed together. It's very difficult for microorganisms to get through. Also, these epithelial cells make mucus and um, uh, antibiotic uh, peptides that can kill microorganisms. And in between these epithelial cells and underneath these epithelial cells are uh, intraepithelial immune cells that can help out with the first line of defense. And how they do that is the topic of a next uh, class.